Have you heard of the term deconstruction? It's kind of a buzzword out there in some places. Is deconstruction good or is it bad? Deconstruction can be both. There are those of the opinion that deconstruction is always bad. I disagree because I know how deconstruction can be very good. I have been through deconstruction. I didn't know that's what it was called back when I did that. It's a buzzword out there now. There's lots of people who have deconstructed their faith and then I just learned a new term. What is it they called? Uh, um, they, they deconverted. They called themselves, they deconverted from Christianity. I didn't even know that was a word. But deconstruction just means to take something apart. And if you want to know more what I said on that, my episode, it's 181 on the podcast, I go into what deconstruction is. But I went through deconstruction of my faith and my childhood when I was writing my book, Emerging with Wings. I used the term digested when I talked about it in the book. So. I don't want to get caught up on the term, but the term is out there, so I want to use the one that people are accustomed to, so people understand what I'm talking about. But to, to deconstruct your faith, there's one way to do it that will serve you well, and that was the way that I had done it. There is a verse in the Bible in 2 Thessalonians, I wrote it down, 2.10, where it talks about in the end times that there's going to be a deceiver that comes and people are going to get swept away in that but there's a reason why there was one reason why and I remember reading that scripture a long long time ago and this one thing stuck with me and it's something I hold on to as the thing that protects us is if we love the truth loving the truth there are people who deconstruct their faith and I don't know what their motives are because I don't know them. And if they have walked away from Jesus, they have not loved the truth. They have loved something else. I don't know what they loved. But when I deconstructed my faith, I was looking for the truth. I was believing so many lies. I had been taught lies. I had been through trauma in church that had planted lies in me. And I was chasing after the truth. And so if you want to deconstruct your faith, chase the truth. God can handle us taking apart what we believe and figuring out the truth and impressing into him and saying, teach me the truth. I think this. I didn't know what grace was for the longest time. I thought I had to earn God's love, which is not the gospel at all. Jesus loves us. I don't have to earn that. You don't have to earn that. You are deeply loved. That's why I'm that lady on the internet who loves you. I come on here and say, I love you because I learned what it's like to be loved. And when we know and understand the love of God for us and what Jesus did for us, we wouldn't turn away. We wouldn't turn away because that love is compelling. It's our biggest need in our life is to be loved. And people walk away because of lies and trauma and deception in some places. I, I don't know everybody. I know my situation. And I know many people who have deconstructed their faith and gotten so much closer because they're chasing the truth. I interviewed a lady on here on my lives on Facebook, and it will be published on my podcast. It will be my 200th podcast episode on my Victoria Souls podcast. Her name is Amy Nortius. And she suffered trauma at the hands of someone who was an elder at her church who was a therapist supposed to be helping her. That's going to make you deconstruct your faith. I interviewed a lady the other day named Kim Peacock, and she'll be on the podcast Going forward, also, she lost her daughter suddenly, 17 years old. They were going along just fine on a family vacation, enjoying life, and everything was wonderful, and then suddenly her 17-year-old daughter is dead. I love, she came up with the term. It just came when we were talking. She was sent into automatic 
deconstruction of everything she believed. So it's not bad to go through deconstruction. But if you don't love the truth, if you don't want to aim for the truth, you could get into trouble. Because there are a lot of lies out there. There is a lot of deception out there. And our own hearts will betray us if we don't have a guide. I was messed up for a long time until Jesus came and found me. In my book, Emerging with Wings, he's, he has a name called the Pursuer. I also call him the Spirit of Grace. He pursued me and apprehended me and saved me from destroying myself. And that's what he wants to do, save you from destroying yourself, because that's what we do. If we're like that, what is it? There's a law of thermodynamics, I think it is. I might have it wrong. Oh, no. <laughs> but anything left to itself will, will destroy itself. It will go from order to disorder. It will go from good to bad. You leave food out, it spoils. That's, that's just life on the planet. And Jesus came to save us from all that destruction. And all we have to do is say, yes, please. And if we don't really get the magnitude of that, we won't appreciate it. But if we get the magnitude of that, oh, there's nothing we wouldn't do for him because he loves us so much. And so I want to encourage you that if you are not happy with what you believe and maybe you're not sure of what you believe or deconstruct it, but look for the truth. I urge you, look for the truth and ask God to help you. He helped me deconstruct my faith so he could usher me into the truth because Jesus is also known as the way, the truth, and the life, the truth. So if you want to, seek after the truth because it will bring joy to your soul. It will bring healing to your heart, just like it did with me because God loves you. I love you. I'm Danielle Burnock from DanielleBurnock.com. Love yourself from Survive to Thrive, that lady on the internet who loves you. Until next time, I love you.